What is going on guys? My name is Trey. Welcome to the Tennessee Innkeeper YouTube channel. Recently I uploaded a short on the channel showing how I feed my founding colonies and someone said that it's not that easy. Um, for some it may not be that easy, some it is. Uh, I luck out with some of my colonies where it's a lot easier than others. I'm not trying to attack this person because sometimes it can be tricky. But I'm going to try to make this video while I'm feeding my founding colonies to show you guys how I do it. Now, I've already got some honey that I have over here in the corner out of focus on some tin foil. But what I do is I get little pieces of tin foil, not that big, but tiny little pieces of tin foil like that. I will get the smallest drop of honey that I possibly can. Sometimes I'll glob it up on the toothpick because it's easier to make a little dab there. And then, let's see if I can get it in focus here. Then I just kind of roll it on off. And it's that easy. That's a lot uh, for a founding colony, especially if there's only like three or four workers. You don't want them to get stuck. It is crucial that they uh, have absolutely no issues with what they are eating, etc., etc. So I'm going to go on ahead and pull out one of my colonies. And I'm going to show you guys just how I feed it. Now, they already have some food in there, I believe. I left a, a roach leg in there. But it's not looking like you can see it in there. I guess they ate it. Or maybe that's it in the back. Sometimes the ants will put it where they drink their water. It's incredibly gross, but they eventually will bring it back. Now, the best way to do this is to use some very fine tip tweezers or whatever you want to call them. I call them sharp tweezers because they're sharp. Some people call them fine. But as you can see, this colony, they're a little stressed out, but they're not super stressed out. They are used to being in the light by now. I've had them for a while. So I will just grab the little drop of honey. And sometimes if they're freaking out, you can kind of cuff them like this. So you can get it. So you can get a better shot. This is me cuffing it. It provides them a dark space. So that way they don't stress out too much. Remember, you wanna keep your colonies in the dark as much as possible. Um, this can be a preference, but I always do it just so that way it's easier to move them when time comes. And already they are running straight for the honey, uh, mainly to check it out, but also because they don't speak. So yeah. Pretty cool watching them all eat. You could honestly watch them for hours, but the queen is uh, stressing out. So I'm gonna put this colony up and I'm gonna go ahead and do this for all of my colonies. I do this exact process for all of them. Sometimes I will do honey and the next day I will do a protein. So like a cricket leg or in my case, a roach leg. So I have dubia roaches or whatever protein you choose. Just make sure it's very small. You don't want a ginormous a chunk of a mealworm or a dubia roach inside of the test tube there Especially if you sometimes forget about it and you forget to take it out after a day It's gonna mold really fast inside of there. You guys saw how dark the cotton was on that one test tube So always keep an eye out Here's the next colony. It's also a Campanatus colony. These are Campanatus Decipienes, however you would say that they're like a reddish color carpenter ant. They're uh, maybe a medium sized species. I wouldn't say they're large compared to Campanatus pennsylvania because that is a large species. My phone cannot focus where the crap, but there they are. And I'm just gonna kind of do the same thing. Now, this colony, along with the other Campanatus I have, they are kind of fast. Um, the larger species normally aren't that fast but they can be sometimes. Uh, my Formica pallidae fulva, they are incredibly fast. If they run out of their tube or whatever, they're in their nest, uh, I, I miss them most of the time and then I have to uh, catch them later on. So here you can see, this is not a problem. The tinfoil is touching the eggs. This will eventually be a problem if this sits for too long because the queen will leave the eggs on the tinfoil and, and then they get stuck to it. Uh, the larvae especially because they have a, uh, I guess, a wetter body. I, that sounds weird to say. I don't know how else to say it, but the eggs normally look a little drier. I, I really don't know the science. Just know that egg and larvae, they stick to tinfoil, especially the larvae. 
So that is colony number two. Let's see. And believe it or not, we have another Campanatus colony here. So we're gonna do the same thing. Some of these queens, like I said, they hate the light. So I try to keep them out as much as possible. They're happy, I'm happy kind of thing. We don't want them stressing out. Some of my colonies I don't mind leaving in the light, especially because of how my room is set up in here. The window just kind of hits them just right and they're used to the light. Woo! Just hit the camera, sorry. Here is another colony. Well, not really a colony yet. A queen that I caught recently. This, I believe, is Laceus Americanus. Yes, Laceus Americanus. Um, most Laceus Americanus that I catch do not start laying until after the one year mark of having them. So this is actually kind of, uh, kind of interesting. Really quickly, I just wanted to show you guys kind of what my whole test tube setup looks like right now. This is the Ants Canada test tube racks. I've stacked them up. I have the colonies that I've just fed right here. I tier them up. So these are freshly caught queens at the top. They are an assortment. There's like Solenopsis right here, Laceus Americanus, uh, Campanatus, who still doesn't have any Nantics, uh, Laceus Americanus, and then a Fedoli or the big headed ant. Queen. She does not have any workers. Here is another colony that I have that I forgot to feed actually. So as you can see, she has eh, about three workers. Uh, not about three workers, she has three workers. We're gonna go on ahead and smack some go-go juice in there, AKA honey. Honey is your best friend at this stage in life. Um, these ants love it. I promise you, I'm feeding some of my colony of carpenter ants honey still to this day, uh, along with the Biformica ant nectar, which that stuff is amazing. You could do that with your colonies that are in test tubes. Uh, just keep in mind, it gets really sticky later on. So here, what colony are you? Oops, sorry. I believe this is a Fadoli colony. Uh, this is a big-headed ant queen and her workers. Now, they reject honey like crazy, so I always give them proteins only. I will occasionally try sugar water. Here she is. She's kind of getting stressed out. I can kind of show you guys a little bit more of her. She's hard to see. My camera doesn't focus. Well. Oh, nope. I lied. This is Solenopsis. This is not Fadoli. I am sorry, guys. As you can see, there's a lot of workers in there, though. They're tiny. They will eventually get bigger. But as I was saying about Fadoli, even though this is Solenopsis, Fadoli I rarely feed honey to just because half the time they were, they do not like it. I think something just fell down. I'm not sure. There we go. Sorry if you guys were out of focus. As you can see, ants are happy. Honey's happy. There's already a worker checking the honey out. Sorry, there's a glare from the light so you can't really see her. Yeah, she's checking it out. I'm gonna try to find the Fadoli colony I am trying to talk about here. I'm gonna go also ahead and also apologize if you guys can't hear me that well. Um, my microphone's a little farther away than normal. This looks like another Fadoli who is laying eggs. I caught her a while ago. Her color was really pretty. I don't know what species specifically. Um, Bicarinata is a very common species in my area, so maybe she's some sort of morph of that. If you guys can tell the coloration and give me an idea of what she is, that'd be awesome. Here is a Solenopsis queen with some eggs. Kind of hard to see her. Well, maybe not. I think you can see her pretty well. Here we go. Here is another Solenopsis colony. Yay! There's the test tubes a little dirty, so we will be cleaning that up very soon. Uh, it seems like they really gosh, seems like they really didn't want that roach leg, so uh, we'll try honey again. 
Now normally, again, sorry for the terrible focus, Apple, I'm so disappointed with your iPhone 13 Pro, you get, uh, Pro Max, I should say, because I advertise this camera to be amazing in this crap. Uh, but you can kind of see there's a lot of dirt right through there. Normally I clean that up, um, but because I'm feeding honey today, I will be pulling the honey out here in a few minutes anyways. So I will use a Q-tip with a little bit of water on it. You don't want the Q-tip soaking wet, but just damp enough to kind of cause everything to stick to it. And then you'll just roll the Q-tip on it. I turn the dry side of the Q-tip over and roll right over where that water was because I don't want the ants to drown and I don't like how it looks on the test tube having a puddle there. Okay, well, evidently I am going bonkers and I don't have a fatal colony with workers. So uh, that's a little odd. But that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Like I said, I just wanted to show you guys how I feed all of my ants and show you guys that, yes, it can be complicated, but in the grand scheme of things, if you are patient, you will prevail. Um, so that's gonna do it for this episode, guys. Remember, honey, Q-tip, little tweezers, and tin foil. Best friend, sorry if you heard my son, he is very loud in there. Um, so if you guys like this video, don't forget to comment like and subscribe i said that weird because i lost my train of thought um but yes honey <laughs> don't forget it honey toothpick tweezers tinfoil your best friends promise i also have these blunt headed uh tweezers they're great and all but they're not good for picking up tinfoil and the test tube so i highly recommend these uh they don't have a brand on them but i will link in the description the tweezers that i have that came in a set so guys that's gonna do it We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.